this is Porsche Cayman T. It's a two-door sports coupe with a centrally mounted engine. It corners like it's on rails. It sounds as if it has a much bigger engine than it actually does, and it's got cloth door handles. I'll start with the letter T. What do you think it stands for? Track? Turbo? No, it stands for Touring. This is what Porsche calls its purest driving models, as if Porsche by itself wasn't purest enough. But this is Porsche, so of course there is going to be some reference to its heritage. The first Porsche T designation appeared in autumn of 1967. It was a 911 T, a replacement for the 912, an entry model offering great price to performance ratio with just basic equipment focusing on the driving experience. The original 911T and this 718T is powered by a 2-liter boxer engine. Gosh, what's a 718? Well, 718 is the current generation Cayman and Boxster, which is what they're called after the facelift a couple of years ago. 718 is a reference to a sports car from the 1950s. Anyway, T means you get cloth door handles and manual AC. Did you even know you could have manual AC in a Porsche? It took me a while to figure it out how it works. But you also get a lot as standard. Some of the stuff was previously available only on the more powerful Cayman S. The T comes as standard with Porsche Active Suspension Management, Sport Chrono Pack, Porsche Stability Management, Porsche Active Drivetrain Mounts, or Porsche Torque Vectoring with mechanically locked rear differential. There are also some aerodynamic tweaks which allegedly make the car more stable around the corners and it is also supposed to be, the Cayman T, it's also supposed to be a more comfortable tourer. So how is it to drive? You completely don't feel the speed in the Cayman T. The car feels wide though, perhaps it's a matter of high window line and the bulging fenders you can see through the windscreen. Moreover, when the car is going slowly at low revs, it sounds like a grinder, so you subconsciously speed up so that the engine starts sounding a bit less strained. Just to be clear, I don't think this engine feels strained at any speed, but before you realize that, you're doing some ridiculous speed, you're going to lose your license, pay a hefty fine, and possibly spend the night locked up with a fat tattooed biker who would like you to call him Alice. The 2.0-liter Cayman has 300 horsepower and 380 Nm of torque. It accelerates from 0 to 100 km per hour in about 5 seconds, depending on the gearbox. This one has a PDK with a Sport Plus pack and it takes 4.7 seconds from 0 to 100 km per hour and less than 11 seconds from 0 to 160. Under normal circumstances, the engine is somewhat muted and you really need to step on the gas to get a downshift. However, as this car comes with chrono pack, it also gets the drive mode knob and, most importantly, a button with sport response. You press that and you've got 20 seconds of everything this engine has. It's enough to overtake a couple of lorries and then some. In Sport or Sport Plus mode, the gear change is fast but never as brutal as in the Alpine A110, which competes with the Cayman. The Cayman is much more refined and comfortable, and that's before we get to the trim level and practicality. More about that in a moment. Driving the Cayman through the corners is an orgy for your senses. Do you remember Julia Roberts in Pretty Woman saying that the car Richard Gere drove corners like it's on rails? Well, she could say the same thing about the Cayman. The speeds it can carry through corners are astonishing and the feedback from the steering wheel, you just feel you can go faster and tighter through every corner, like there's limitless front grip. But don't be fooled. In slow, tight corners, you can break traction easily. And okay, as long as you've got traction control, you're fine. But if you don't, then you better be good at controlling the car. The steering, it is sensitive, but it's not nervous. Porsche makes exceptional sports cars, but if I were to say what's my favorite thing about Porsche, it's the steering and the manual gearbox. And of course, this one has PDK for some reason. Come on, guys. 
specs and press cars with a manual gearbox. It's just so great. I'm not gonna sit in city traffic and burn the clutch. I'm gonna drive roads like this in a Cayman T and I want my manual. By the way, don't think for a minute that getting rid of automatic climate control and the door handles makes the Cayman T lighter than the regular Cayman. It's actually heavier. All these extra systems make it about 15 kilograms heavier, so it comes at 1,455 kilos with liquids and the driver on board. That's almost 300 kilograms heavier than the Alpine A110. However, you sit in an Alpine and you kind of wonder whether it's worth 55 grand and you sit in a Cayman and you say, hey, can I have more options, please? That said, something squeaks in the cockpit of this car. Probably there's some loose bolt around the driver's seat. It's an easy fix, but it shouldn't happen, and it shouldn't happen in a new car, especially if it starts at 65,000 euro. The sound. A standard Cayman T comes with a sports exhaust and a button which is supposed to change something to the way it sounds. From the inside, I can't tell the difference. I haven't heard it from the outside yet, so I'll install a microphone, we'll listen to it together, and then you'll tell me what you think. brakes. Very effective. There are four pistons all the way around, 330 millimeter discs in the front and 299 millimeter discs in the rear. You can also get composite ceramic brakes as an option, 350 millimeters in the front and uh, six pistons in the front. But yeah, that'll give you a lot of stopping power on the track. On the road, not worth it. Standard is the 36 centimeter GT steering wheel covered in leather. This one comes with an Alcantara pack, so there is an Alcantara on the steering wheel and on the gear selector. Also, as standard, uh, you get Sport Plus seats with electric backrest adjustment, sliding and moving up and down is manual. But of course, you can get more fancy seats if you want. There is a 718 logo uh, on the headrests. Uh, the middle of the seats is sport text, whatever that means, and the sides and the headrests are leather. Up to two, three hours journey, the seats are relatively comfortable, and if you plan a longer journey, you may start feeling the seats in the back. However, they are more comfortable than in the McLaren 570S. Also, because there is full adjustment, it's easier to get a comfortable driving position than in the Alpine A110. A few words about the suspension and the ride. Sport active suspension means 20 millimeter lower ground clearance than on the standard Cayman. This in turn translates into problems going over bumps. Even in a McLaren, I didn't have to slow down this much and that's before I started using the front suspension raising mechanism. So if you live in a heavily speed bumped area, think twice before getting the PASM. On the open road, the ride is firm but comfortable enough. Of course, you need to avoid bigger potholes, but for a sporty car, it's pretty good. However, as the road surface gets rougher, there is a lot of tire noise. Soundproofing of the bottom of the car clearly wasn't a priority. Practicality. Now, besides the low suspension, the Cayman is pretty practical. There is good storage inside with two pockets in each door. There is storage under the armrest in front of the passenger. There are also two cup holders, one of which obstructs the infotainment screen. There is no Android Auto, but it is internet connected. So if you don't know the address for, let's say, a restaurant, it will find it for you. There are also two storage compartments around the arms of the driver and the passenger. You can squeeze maybe two small water bottles in them, but I would be worried about them getting too hot from the engine. 
Speaking of the engine, this is a centrally mounted engine and this means it is located between the passenger compartment and the rear axle. And this means the Cayman has two boots, or you can say it has a trunk and a frunk. In the trunk you can fit a set of golf clubs and a bag. Not necessarily golf clubs in a bag, but you can fit both. And in the frunk you can fit quite a lot of shopping. As far as engine access is concerned, unless you have a big garage and you're a bit of a tinkerer, I would take it to a mechanic. You can add some oil and some coolant under normal circumstances, but that's pretty much it. If I were to complain about something, it would be the lack of dedicated phone buttons on the steering wheel. In order to pick up a phone or end a call, you have to fumble for the virtual display key on the on the screen and it can be slightly obstructed by one of the cup holders yes you can probably find phone options on the screen here in the instrument binnacle but then you have to play around with this little joystick which is partially covered by the steering wheel so no that's not the best idea and i know it's first world problems but at this price point i think i have the right to complain just a tiny little bit Equipment. For about 65,000 euro you get all the systems which improve driving dynamics. However, there is also about 17,000 euro of options on this car. The most expensive ones are PDK for 3250, Porsche Dynamic Light System Plus or something for 2 grand and the Satnav which is 2260. The rest of the stuff is mainly cosmetic. What is worth paying for is a 64 liter tank instead of a 54 liter standard one. It costs just 119 euro. Despite the claimed combined fuel figure of around 8 liters per 100 kilometers, I found that 9 liters extra urban is more realistic and if this car is driven like it's meant to be driven, 12 to 15 is nothing extraordinary. The Cayman is the everyman's Porsche. Okay, perhaps that's a bit too bold of a statement, but you don't need to be filthy rich to afford one. Go easy on the options, haggle a bit, get decent financing and you could be driving off in one of these. And the Cayman T really offers good value in terms of performance. And do you like the Cayman? Cayman T? Or for you it's 911 or nothing? Let me know in the comment section below. Subscribe if you haven't, rate and share this video with friends who may be on a lookout for a sports car. This could be their next choice, who knows? Also, join me for new reviews every Friday. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.